All right, my name is Thiet, and it's time to talk about Warhammer 40k. Again, Indomitus has released. Not that I would know about that. Uh, <laughs> not that I would know about that. It's been a bit of a disaster for me personally. It may have been for some of you as well, but it hasn't been for everyone. So yesterday, point at which I'm doing this, yesterday was the release date. I had been able to get my pre-order in nice and early. Now, I get quite a lot of Warhammer pre-orders for... Uh, you know, Warhammer Age of Sigma, as well as more recently Warhammer 40k as well. Warcry when that's happened as well. I um, I learnt that quite often with the pre-orders, they, uh, I mean, this may have been compounded by COVID, but even before then, uh, they do tend to underproduce, particularly for, for the more popular lines. So I was there getting in very, very early. So I got my pre-orders in. It wasn't just Indomitus one. I didn't get it for several boxes, one box, but there were lots of other Indomitus uh, products as well that I wanted to get. I'm still waiting for them because what normally happens is I, uh, you get your email on the day saying, oh, it's on the way. And it arrives where I am via Royal Mail, which usually would mean it'll arrive in the early afternoon, a little bit after lunch maybe. So that was fine. I cleared the decks, make sure I was ready to start on assembling the models, got everything nice and clear, finished off the bits of painting I had to do on other models, and then just waited. And I, and I saw um, that it was being sent via UPS this time, and I thought, oh, that's okay then. Um, there's maybe a chance I'll get it in the morning then, perhaps. And I looked a little bit more carefully, and it said I'll be getting it on Monday. So not happy, not happy. I've got to start off by saying not happy there that Games Workshop have chosen to change the normal. Because when you select what sort of method of delivery you want, I mean, Royal Mail is what I selected. That's not what I've got. And they've gone instead for a courier company that's actually very good, I have to say. But they don't deliver on Saturdays unless you specifically want them to. And that means costing more. And, and Games Workshop didn't give me the option of paying more, for example, to make sure that I would get it on the Saturday, because I would have done. They didn't say, I mean, I still don't know the reason. I have asked them, because I'm not happy. I have asked them. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is means I'm waiting uh, at this point now until tomorrow anyway. Whatever. It is what it is. So I'm not going to moan and moan about that, because the last video I did on this, I was moaning. But for other people, I thought I was in the clear. Um, then there was, So a couple of other things. First of all, the app was released, and I have subscribed for the app. I do have Battlescribe as well. I'm not going to go about the, the differences between them too much at this stage, other than to note that I can at least get the ninth edition points on this, because that's rather important. Now, I haven't read what other people have had to say about the app, but I can probably guess um, it's not really complete, is it? Uh, for a start, I mean, one thing I'm not happy about, it doesn't seem possible, as far as I can tell at the moment, if anyone knows different, please post how doesn't seem possible to put it on my desktop. Now, the thing with Battlescribe, which you use to, to construct armies, which is quite a good tool for 40K. See, I think for Fantasy, for, for Age of Sigma, the one on Games Workshop website's fine, but they don't have something similar for 40K. It looks like they do, but in actual fact, they don't. So uh, the thing with Battlescribe is when you use the app, the app's appalling. I mean, when I first got it, I thought this is appalling. I'm not getting this. I'm not paying for this. Then I downloaded the app onto my Chromebook um, and, and it was not much better. But there is a desktop version and that's actually very good, at which point I paid for it. So I, I fully subscribe to Battlescribe now. Now the 40K one, unfortunately, doesn't appear to have a desktop version at all as yet. Hopefully it will, but as yet it doesn't. So it is just the app. Um, now, that's not what I want it for. I don't want it to be there for a game. I produce my own crib sheets for actual games. The number of times I see even very good players making mistakes, forgetting things, and it's, it's because they don't have a crib sheet. The app doesn't help you with that. But that's another issue. Main problem is, on the Chromebook, the app didn't work properly at all. It actually looked like there were only a few data sheets on it, like a handful, literally. Um, I don't know what that was, but it works sort of on my phone. So I have access to all of the data sheets on my phone and the points values. I can think of improvements in terms of the way it's formatted, but I can also think of improvements for Battlescribe as well. I'm not going to go on about that. My main problem with the app is that certain features are not ready yet, and it just sort of says, oh, these features aren't ready yet. 
why is it launched? But some features are, I mean, it's the fact that we're paying for it as well. But anyway, it is what it is. It crashes quite a lot. You click on a thing and it just shuts down. Uh, and it does that a lot. When I was trying to, for example, find some points values, given that I wasn't gonna get my chapter approved yesterday, so I look, I have tried to, I know a lot of these points values have been available online, but it's sort of Alyssa, you know, Games Workshop, they were leaks and I sort of thought, no, I'll, I'll wait until the actual release date and then I'll look at the points values. So, um, but trying to get some of, particularly the Forge World one, just kept crashing, I kept clicking on it, no, clicking, no, no. The Terax pattern termite assault drill took me a long time to find the points values for because however I tried to type it in, it just crashed. Eventually it'll let me when I just put drill in. <laughs> Um, so it doesn't work properly from that point of view. Where, so from that point of view, it's a very poor launch. Uh, so it, it, yeah, it's not been a good launch for something you're paying for. If you weren't paying for it, you would just go, well, it's just launched, we'll give it time, but you are paying for it. So there is that, um, there is that, that's, that's disappointing. But I'm not just gonna rant on about that. Um, that's my end of my rant finished. I am now gonna talk about what I now see as my, my main task looking ahead. So, for those who don't know, and uh, why would you? I had been, I used to play Warhammer a lot, a long time ago, stopped playing it, playing World of Warcraft, as might be evident from this, from most of this channel. Uh, it's back to Warhammer again. About a couple of years ago, I started playing Warhammer Age of Sigma, and then this year was going to be the year I was going to get 40k and start playing that. And I was, and I was building some armies. Still got some more Death Guard to do. I'm, I'm holding up a green figure. That is going to be foolish, isn't it? Um, but the point is that uh, I was getting a couple of armies ready. I've not actually played a game with them yet, and the points values have changed. So here's what, what I'm faced with. So... Um, with the new system, of course, points values have generally gone up. A few things have gone down, a few things have gone up. Um, sometimes it's, they've just tidied things up. Like I looked at my Necron army and I thought, bloody hell, because Immortals, look like I'd gone sky high. What the hell? And then I realised that their uh, Tesla carbines, or their gun, well, whatever gun option you want to use with them, is now set at zero points. So... Although they've gone up in price, it's not as much as I thought. So I've worked it all out. Now, Death Guard first. I think Death Guard will, will be the army I want to play first um, for two reasons. First of all, when I used to play 40k, Death Guard, were, uh, Death Guard and Necrons were mostly my favourites. But uh, there are some others I want to try out as well. Um, but Death Guard were my favourites of the favourites. Or it wasn't really Death Guard then. It was just Nurgle Space Marines, I suppose. Um... But also, I think with Indomitus, with the box set, there's going to be people playing Necrons more. And I don't like Civil Wars. Like, if I'm going to have a Necron, if I'm going to use my Necrons, I want it to be against something that's not Necrons. Whereas, so Death Guard, I'm more likely to come across people who just don't play another Death Guard army. So that's quite good. Um, so I'm, I'm focusing on that. And this is the army as it looked with the old system, with 8th edition. And it was uh, bang on 2,000 points. And it included... Um, a few detachments, you know, characters wise, I had uh, Typhus, I had a Malignant Plague Caster, a Demon Prince. I also had a Lord of Contagion. Now, that was quite a late addition to my plans, purely because with uh, the um, War of the Spider um, Psychic Awakening book, you could now have spending a, a command point using a stratagem to give a Lord of Contagion the Chaos Lord ability to re-roll ones to hit for anyone in range, uh, which is what I think they were lacking. So that was, because I put one of those in, I used to have Chaos Lord, of course, now Lord of Contagion, nice one. And, um, you know, two units of 20 Pox Walkers, um, a unit of seven Plague Marines, a unit of seven Blight Lord Terminators, seven, obviously, magic number, you know, um, Foul Blight Spawn, Terax Pattern, uh, drill, termite assault drill, as I talked about, to ferry the plague marines and the foul blight spawn around, and the terminators also. I mean, several parts you can see there. I've got things in reserve there, which is, you know, for an army that's not particularly mobile, I, th I thought quite useful to get onto objectives with the way Ninth Edition plays, um, and then a couple of plague burst crawlers, uh, deradio dreadnought, and a hellbrute. 
And, you know, I was quite liking the shape of the army. Uh, then for Necrons, uh, and with ne when I put my Necrons down, you can actually see the slightly reduced size. It only seems to be slightly reduced size of the tabletop area for like a 2,000 point game. Uh, they, they ain't half crammed in. Where you've got some, ve uh, some buildings in there as well, ter other terrain. I'd be thinking, blimey, it's just as well I'm going to have to chop something from this. I don't think I'd be able to deploy it all. But that was what that was. You can see there, a um, few Doom Scythes, a couple of Doomsday Arcs, a Command Barge. Um, Canoptic Scarabs as a, as a screen. Three lots of Ten Immortals, Tesla, of course. Uh, a Lord for the reroll ones to wound. A Triax Stalker for the reroll roll ones to hit. And um, a Cryptek with Chronomatron. Chronometron and uh, Imatech, of course. Um, and again, you know, I was quite liking that. I was looking forward to using that. Now, what it's worked out at is, uh, so the Necron army in eighth came to 1,997 points. They've both gone up. The Necrons have gone up more, but they've both gone up. Um, so the, the Death Guard is now 2,230 and the Necrons 2,260. So that the aim at this point is having already started some of the army and quite liking the shape of the army. And even for ninth edition, I'm looking at this for ninth edition, still thinking, yeah, I can still, like, I think both of them still got enough mobility there. Um, with the Necrons, maybe slightly trickier for objective gain, you know, if you want to use troops to get onto those objectives. So unless you can push past the objectives and stop your opponent getting onto them, um, the Necron maybe is weaker, maybe does need more of a rethink. But the Death Guard, particularly with that being my main one, you look at it and you think, okay, I can get that a lot of people at the moment are going to be just thinking, well, I just need to chop 230 points, don't I? But one, it's not always as simple as that. And two, you know, if you can do that, you can just leave a hole in your army. If your army, if you think it works all right, and obviously I've not used it, but if you think it's got a nice shape and you imagine using it, if you just take something out of it, then you're taking something out that had a purpose, you know, because if you can easily chop 230 points from your army and the army balance is still all right, you have to wonder, was that 230 points in the first place well spent? So, you know, I am looking at, I mean, a couple of things I am looking at straight away and I'm thinking two units of 20 pox walkers with the new blast rules, would I want two units of 20 pox walkers? Because part of me thinks, would I not split just just have units of ten pox walkers? Uh, I could potentially still have the same number of them, but at ten, that means that the your blast weapons don't quite get as many shots unless you roll well on them. But there are break points, so if you've got a unit six or greater, then a blast weapon will do a minimum of three shots. If it's eleven or greater, six shots. So you look at it and you think. Um, I'll be inviting more shots. That being said, there are certain advantages in having larger units as well because it means your opponent can whittle some away. You do get the chance with Poxwalkers potentially to bring some back when you get them into combat. and uh, Or even with one of the, the rules in War of the Spider if someone else gets into combat. So there is that potential as well, whereas with units of 10, they can just be completely destroyed. And that was an, another thing where, again, because... Part of me was then thinking, but if you have units of 10, then you're making first strike easy to get, but first strike isn't really a thing in ninth edition. Um, so I'm gonna to have to sort of consider that, but that wouldn't necessarily help me with the points unless of course I just reduce the number of pox walkers. If I reduce the number of pox walkers, then I'd be thinking to myself, do I really need to take typhus? Um, they sort of go hand in hand. Um, I mean, maybe I don't take pox walkers at all. Yeah, maybe I'll just take some Plague Marines. Um, I like the idea of, of having big blocks of troops that you can get to an objective. So I'm not I'm not looking at that as, as a prospect. Um, and I am thinking, you know, and then the seven Blight Lord Terminators, do I think, do I just go down to five? Um, would that be as useful? Do I just, and do I do that around the block? Do I just chop from units, keep the same general you know, theme and just downgrade things. Do I chop a couple from the Blight Lord Terminators? Do I chop a couple from the Plague Marines? Um, and stuff like that. So there's this, and, and you know, potentially chop a, a Plague Burst Crawler and call it largely the same army with, with a couple of smaller units and, and one shooting option gone altogether. 
do I do that? That's possibly what I'm thinking in terms of the moment. Or do I just go from scratch and completely design a totally different type of army? Um, the Plague Marines and the Foul Blightspawn, for example, are not expected to tramp down the board. I would use that. I would put those in the assault drill. So, that, I mean, the, the benefit of that is it's a vehicle that can effectively be placed in reserve and it can pop up whenever you like on the board as long as it's more than nine inches away from uh, enemy units and um and at, you know at the end of the movement phase and you and your contents the occupants can get out straight away as well they don't have to wait till the next turn to get out they could get out at the end there they can't move of course but they can get out uh, again as long as they because obviously there's different rules with disembarking now from vehicles as long as they can still do that and still be more than nine inches away from enemy so careful placement there so you've got the option of, of plonking it on an objective or plonking it near an enemy unit with you know the potential to at least get some shooting off against it maybe even get a charge against it as well and then the terminators with the lord of contagion can do that elsewhere or in the same place to just create a big block of stuff you know i really liked it but there's going to be some thoughts there so that is going to be my task uh, for the next one if anyone's got any little suggestions with their experience put that in the comments below hopefully in about a week's time i will have come up with a working plan for uh, for the death guard army at least because i am looking at the necron army and obviously what i want to do is look at which i haven't yet um look at the data sheets for the new necron models and i could be tempted to completely rethink the way I do my Necron army. Um, as I say, the Death Guard army, I very much like the shape of it. I did the Necron army for 8th. Not as much for ninth, maybe. So I am more open with the Necron army to completely redesigning it. I would still like uh, a certain number of Immortals there. But I could be persuaded, maybe, to take some Warriors and a ghost arc to deliver them to an objective perhaps um, that is a possibility even though i i mean one of the things i was doing while i was waiting for the package that never arrived yesterday was to create uh, a doomsday arc it's the same basic model as the ghost arc uh, I, I didn't enjoy building that and i won't enjoy doing the uh, the ghost arc but it is what it is um so anyway that's hopefully for a video for next week uh, i should be able to update on that let me know your thoughts how did indominus's release go for you until next time hope you found the video interesting if you did don't forget to click the like button and until next time i'll see you later